G'day ladies and gents, Cubic Media here. In a previous video, we embarked on a quest to obtain Minecraft's God Particle, the largest XP orb obtainable in survival. We also investigated the possibility of using the God Particle to make Minecraft's most powerful XP farm that produces 89 million experience points per hour. However, we ran into a pretty impossible roadblock because each experience point would require a cactus to be smelted in a furnace, and 89 million cactus per hour is simply impossible to produce in survival. So we conceded to making this non-vanilla friendly proof of concept using movable block entities. However, some recently emerging tech has now reopened the possibility of obtaining a fully vanilla survival compatible 89 million XP per hour God Particle farm. Around the time I was recording the quest for Minecraft's God Particle, a friend of mine, JKM, was experimenting with update suppression and discovered a really funny mechanic known as the tile entity swap. This would allow you to take the data of something like a chest and remove the block without affecting the data. You can then place down something like a bee nest and it will inherit the chest block data. It will even behave like a chest allowing you to use hoppers to put items inside and extract items out of the chest block data. This was a super funny and quirky mechanic, but unfortunately it didn't really have that many practical uses. I figured this mechanic could be used to copy the furnace data to other furnaces, and so I spoke with JKM and we both decided it would not be possible. However, if we had just gone and tested it, we would have found that, yes, you can in fact copy the data to new furnaces and obtain infinite gov particles. This is why you should always test ideas, because you could be moments away from discovering something significant. The only problem is that this method is actually quite tedious to implement, because you need to repeatedly replace this comparator, as well as replacing the furnace. But then in 1.19, Mojang made the landmark decision to fundamentally change the way that block updates are processed, preventing us from using the stack overflow exception. This meant that the highly standardized layout of the rail base update suppressor would no longer work as of 1.19. But technical Minecraft is much like the mythical Hydra. If you cut off one standard way of doing something, Several more are bound to take its place. Thanks to the discoveries of people like Void, and testing by people like Sava, we now have a new way to obtain God Particles renewably known as Class Cast Exception Suppression. This works by using Tile Swap to replace a Lecturn with a Shulker Box, forming a new kind of suppressor that automatically resets. So if we go ahead and set this up, now, we can break and replace the furnace repeatedly, obtaining an infinite amount of god particles. Now we're only limited by how quickly we can break and replace the furnace, which if we use a netherite pickaxe with efficiency 5, we find that the interval is 10 game ticks. With haste 2 and a golden pickaxe, we can actually bring this up to 9 game ticks per furnace placed, however, because we can only absorb one god particle every two game ticks, we'll want the interval to be divisible by two, meaning we would rather have the 10 game tick interval over the odd 9 game tick interval. Also, if our furnace is only dropping a single god particle every 10 game ticks, we would rather have the furnace dropping five god particles so we get one god particle every two game ticks. One god particle is 2477 cactuses smelted. So if we instead go ahead and multiply this value by 5, we get 12,385 cactus smelted, and this will produce exactly 5 god particles from breaking a single furnace. So now, if we continuously break and replace the furnace, we should be getting the maximum rate of god particles that our player can absorb. Oh, and that's also another issue that we'll have to talk about. Turns out, if you have a crappy internet connection causing a desync between your local client and the server, sometimes your client can think it broke or place a block, but the server goes a nap and schedules the action to occur later in a different tick phase. 
And something to keep in mind about update suppressors is that any game mechanic that is not processed in the player phase will cause a crash. So we just crashed the game and lost our god furnace. In order to combat this I've made a simple furnace array that will charge up 8 god furnaces in parallel with 5 god particles in each furnace. A hopper cart based shocker box unloader gives us our precision cactus distribution as well as precision fuel distribution. Underneath we have a precision hopper clock timed for exactly 10 seconds. So every 10 seconds we release the cactus minecart to send cactuses to all of our furnaces. And every 10 seconds we will increment this binary counter that once initialized will count all the way up to 12,385 in a binary representation at which point it will stop sending cactuses to the furnaces. This will allow the furnace array to run fully autonomously for roughly 35 hours to produce our 8 god furnaces. Alright to give a simple demonstration let's initialize the counter like so. Then we dispatch the cactuses and the fuel minecart and the furnaces will be supplied with cactus and fuel precisely every 10 seconds for the cactus and precisely every 80 seconds for the fuel. We can then go ahead and tick warp for 35 hours. And you can see the binary counter incrementing extremely rapidly under the tick warp. However, of course, in reality, this will be a very slow process. And there we go, we just ticked over the last few bits and the machine is now sitting idle with hopefully 5 god particles in every single furnace. We go ahead and check the block entity data of one of these furnaces. Yep, we got exactly 12,385 cactuses smelt. Over on the WaveTech SMP, JKM and I have already gone and built one of these furnace arrays and left it running for 35 hours. Alright, we should be coming up on it very soon. Hey! In order to combat the boredom of waiting for a furnace array to run for 35 hours, me and JKM got up to a little bit of shit posting. Alright, here is the chunk loader that is keeping the furnace array alive. Let's go ahead and see if this thing is done. So we've got the shulker boxes set up for the CCE suppression already. And if we have a look at the array, the binary counter has finished. But before we get right into farming god particles, we should make sure to insulate our furnaces because if any items get popped into these furnaces while the CCE suppressors are active, that would be an instant server crash. With the furnaces now insulated, there is one last step to do, and that is to make sure that nothing important is running in case we accidentally crash the server. So all you want to do is place down the comparators. Get ourselves some furnaces in the offhand. And time for the moment of truth. If I break this furnace, I should get exactly 5 god particles. Hey, would you look at that. Straight to 68. They keep going. Heck yeah. God particles are a go. And that is level 1000 in less than 5 minutes. So how long would it take to reach something like level 1 million? Well unfortunately due to the quadratic expansion of XP needed to gain each level, you would need 4.5 trillion XP to reach level 1 million. At 89 million XP per hour, that would take roughly 6 years to reach level 1 million. Okay, if it takes that long just to get to level 1 million with the maximum of XP possible, 
then what actually is the record for the highest level in Minecraft? After searching around various forums and YouTube, the highest level I could consider as legitimate is this hardcore player at around 30,000 levels, which would give them a score of about 4 billion XP points, which we could double in just over a week. But honestly, what is the point? Sure, I could just sit here with an auto clicker for over a week and claim the record, but the instant that I stopped, somebody else would simply take this design, use it for slightly longer than me, and beat that record. And then it becomes a game of who can AFK mine furnaces for the longest. So that's just my take on the issue, I'd be interested to hear your opinions down in the comments below. But I'm at least satisfied to say that the quest for Minecraft's God Particle has finally come to an end. We now have Minecraft's fastest XP farm, and I guess that's another record that's hard to beat. So thank you all very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.